applying this definition to the hiring of an interim general manager results in several questions. Logically, any time you appoint anyone to an interim position, the question is naturally asked, when will the position no longer consider, be considered interim? That said, before this board makes a decision to appoint an interim general manager to a permanent general manager position, I would like to point out a few concerns that I have as a ratepayer and as a concerned citizen. According to published agendas and minutes of meetings held since the interim appointment of Mr. Ron Smith, there has been no evidence of an effort to find a permanent employee or a permanent appointee as general manager. There is no evidence of the RCSD conducting candidate interviews once he was appointed, and there's no evidence that the RCSD ran advertisements looking for a permanent general manager. I need to ask why the search was not conducted for a permanent general manager since he was hired as an interim manager. The fact that no search actions were ever taken, have ever taken place, confirms my suspicion that Ron Smith's hiring was a planned, premeditated action by a board majority acting upon a political promise to a former political campaign consultant. Mr. Smith's selection was evident from the very first day that Directors McKay, Lansgard, and Shingledecker were seated. In the audience that very night of the first meeting, we have two future RCSD stakeholders who are present here today. We have Ron Smith, and we have the current legal counsel, Allison Burns, before they were ever employees of the RCSD or providing services to the RCSD. In fact, by her own admission to fellow ratepayers, Ms. Burns negotiated the contract that brought Mr. Smith to the RCSD. Was it ever disclosed that Ms. Burns and Mr. Smith had a pre-existing work relationship in this Lancaster city government? Where's the transparency? The very night that Ron Smith was appointed as general manager, Ms. Burns was conveniently absent. Was it ever disclosed that Ms. Burns and Mr. Smith had a pre-existing work relationship in the Lancaster city government? Yes, I asked that question twice because it's that important. There's more at stake here than just the RCSD. I guess it's the same transparency that never disclosed the business relationship that Ron Smith was a paid political consultant for a campaign that brought Lansgard, McKay, and Shingledecker to office. The bottom line is, Mr. McKay, just as you brought Bud Hill here in the 90s, you've assisted this board in a very bad decision of hiring Mr. Ron Smith. Mr. Smith was and still is unqualified for the position of general manager. The fact has not changed since his appointment. His lack of experience and water knowledge was underscored when Olaf, yourself, sitting in the Wayside Cafe on November the 19th, you walked in for lunch with Mike Escalante. And you were heard saying, and I quote, now that we have our guy in there, we're moving so fast. With no experience and no water knowledge, he just keeps on moving. End quote. The position of RCSD manager should not be the political appointment of a friend, a business partner, nor should it be the offshoot of some unspoken backroom deal focused on some other unknown, unpublished agenda. As a rate payer, I am merely asking for the transparency in the process of hiring a fully qualified person who is focused on what's good for this community and not focused on his or her next political step. I ask the board to please vote no to considering Mr. Ron Smith for the RCSD's general manager and begin an earnest effort of finding a qualified candidate. Thank you. Anyone else? I will reiterate here, I was here the night when you said I was the one who, I heard it right from your mouth, so Ms. Burns. So, I mean, we can go back in the recording and we can find it. Because I was here when that happened, along with these guys. I'd like to ask the board a question as to what has been done other than a new 
laws and or new uh, iteration of doing in-house labor has been done different here at the community service district since Ron took office. Answer that. No, I, I'm asking the board. They're the ones to talk to. You don't answer questions. Well, they're they're, they're they're right on the they're on the agenda. I don't, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. If you look across the street, you see the dollar store. Uh, uh, that doesn't have nothing to do with uh, it. Uh, 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 okay, sir. <laughs> It is my recommendation that we not respond to public comments. It's the public's opportunity to speak and provide their comments to the district. Uh, and the board should listen and uh, take those comments into consideration. Okay, and I reiterate that in the past she has said that if it's on the agenda, you can respond. So I don't know why she's telling you you can't respond this time. So, Ron, also, I'd like to ask you, have you been totally honest with uh, your working here at the district and where you've been when you worked here at the district? I don't know specifically what kind of question that is. So. I would say, if you say you're at a meeting, are you at a meeting? If you're not here in your office? I, I don't really report to anybody and say when I'm at meetings or not. I check in with staff. These guys are your boss. I'm asking. Right. I don't check with them on a daily basis and tell them what I'm doing each of the day. Okay. The operation of this agency is under my authority. Your employees are the employees of this district. These are your boss, and you answer to them. You, they don't answer to you. Do you understand that part? We're, we're, we're done. We're done. This, this, okay. is, this is public okay. comment, not time for interrogatories, too, Seth. So. Okay, I asked a question. We're debate. So, have you ever driven any of the vehicles here under any influence of anything, not uh, even if it was under the legal limit? I would suggest to the board that a PI would tell you different on both of those uh, questions I just asked. Thank you. Anyone else? I, I better make a comment. Hi, I'm Teresa. I live in this area, and my only comment is that I would think it would behoove this board and you to maybe answer some questions so people understand what's going on because there seems to be a whole lot of stuff being said and a whole lot of stuff swishing around and you guys don't seem to want to answer any of it and it's really hurting this district and I feel bad for our town. Our town is just getting run over with a lot of negative press, a lot of negative stuff about you guys but you don't answer anything, you don't say anything and it's all looking bad so I think it would behoove you to talk once in a while, and I haven't seen much of it here. So, I know you, you probably get tired of them telling you this and that and whatever, but if you don't answer it and people don't know what's going on, it's going to continue. Am I correct? You all know that, because you do the same thing probably with things you want to find out. But, so open up, let them know. If there's something, do it. If not, then you know what, you're going down a bad road. And the community's going to drop at one point, so I would suggest you do. Well, like I said. Anyone else? <laughs> All right, we're going to go into closed session on these two items. Number one and two on the agenda. I don't represent the community. I'm representing my own opinion. But I can tell you, if I had a job, and it was a very singular focused job of taking care of water, sewer, lights, graffiti abatement, parks and recreation. I would look at other communities around me and try to figure out what they're doing, how they're doing it wrong. When the Kern County Grand Jury issues a report on Golden Hills, something these guys need to start reading and they need to learn from the mistakes of others and they need to stop making silly mistakes. They're wasting our money, they're wasting our time. That's all I've got, thank you. Thank you. We're making an open session, legal counsel. Can you just tell us what happened? Yes, uh, in closed session, the board considered items one and two as listed on the agenda. Um, with regard to item two, in closed session, the board voted order one, Director Glennon voting no, uh, to uh, remove the word interim from the title of the interim general manager uh, and under the existing contract with no other changes to that contract. I'm right, shocked. Without objection, we are adjourned. I am so shocked. <laughs> really?
You guys do a background check on this guy? <laughs> We made our general manager permanent, and I think he's a good manager, and I think he's going to be great for our district. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, President Wallace. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. If you can just go ahead and let me know, or let us know, uh, what exactly happened in the special board meeting for RCSD today. Well, as you know, I can't tell you what happened in the special board meeting, but when we came out of special board meeting, as our, our council, Allison Burns, explained, we voted to uh, remove the term interim from uh, interim general manager Ron Smith's contract, so he's no longer the interim general manager, but he's now officially the general manager of the Roseman Community Services District, uh, according to his contract that we entered into back in September of 2015. Okay, and if you can just, are there any concerns, or are, does it look encourage, pro, encouraging? Well, what, are we, what do we think here? Well, we're highly encouraged by the, uh, I know you were here at the last meeting with the mid- your budget review, a very, a very good mid-year budget review showing he's already saved us almost a million dollars. Uh, that type of, as I was explaining to one of the constituents who was wondering about that, he hit a home run with that one. Now, do we expect him to hit a home run every time? When I, well, when I see Sammy Sosa step to the plate or something like that, yeah, I expect him to hit a home run every time. Will they hit a hit home run every time? Probably not, but I want him in there trying, and he has the ability to hit home runs from time to time. And uh, I hope to expect him to see him hitting a few more home runs. If he is good enough to take off the interim part of his title, how come we did not extend his contract? Because it's a process that would require uh, us to know what his terms are, first of all. Uh, we, we finished the evaluation, and then we, were, we need to know what his terms are and offer our terms. And that process needs to be gone back and forth. And when that's done, uh, hopefully we'll have uh, something we can let the, the, the uh, public look at and comment on. And then we would make a, if, if we were to offer him a contract or come to an agreement, then we could uh, vote on it. But obviously, it's not, you can't vote on something that's not before you. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Thank you. All right, thanks.